Well, good morning, Walden Church. We are super excited because for the next three weeks, we are going to be talking about missions and compassion and what you and I can do about it. And I'm grateful that today we get to have Compassion Sunday because of all the qualities a follower of Jesus should have. I think compassion is one of the greatest. And it's one of the things I love about our church. I think there is a evident, consistent uh, example of compassion here and for those who serve here. But before we get into the message today, I wanted to give you an overview of where your money goes, right? Where does Walden Church money go towards missions? Because I realized we don't talk about it a lot. In fact, uh, maybe if you went to the website, right, at waldenchurch.com, you would see the list of all of those. And periodically we have uh, some of those uh, people come by and talk. We do mention them throughout the year, but maybe not all at once like this. And I think that's one of the unique things about being a non-denominational community church like us is that all the money that's given is ours to distribute. Meaning we don't answer to any parent organization that requires dues or tells us how we should spend our money. So when we as a church discussed how we would give towards missions, we decided that our church would give towards women, children, the poor, and because we are a lake community, that we would give towards water. So let me tell you who our missions are. The first is the Pregnancy Assistance Center North. PACN is a 501c3 that educates regarding pregnancy and sexual health issues. It is the only center of its kind in Montgomery County, and it provides entirely free and confidential services to about 7,000 clients, and 60% of clients are between the ages of 15 and 24. And they are located in Conroe, and next week one of our speakers will be from PACN. The second is God's Garage. They are also a Christian nonprofit organization that is run primarily by volunteer mechanics with the gifts of repairing vehicles. And what they do is they give those to single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military. God's Garage regularly gives away about 100 cars a year, and they fix or repair another 70 cars a year. They are located in Conroe, and they will also be here next Sunday. The third is Compassion United. They work with local homeless. They provide outreach, relief, and empowerment for those on the fringes of society. It all started with one family who decided to buy lunch for the homeless in downtown Conroe, and they are a full-blown nonprofit today. The founder, Luke Redis, will come and speak to us next week. Our fourth mission is Arrow Children and Family. Arrow is the preferred Christian provider of child welfare and educational services, connecting church and government to serve vulnerable children and families. Arrow serves children who have experienced abuse, trauma, or instability through foster care. And they do this by recruiting and training foster families and through community-based services by improving the health and stability of families within their own home. And they are located in Spring. Our fifth mission is Hope's Bridge. They provide needed resources for foster and adoptive children and families, as well as other families as are able within Montgomery County and beyond. They accomplish this through their established partnership with local churches, as well as with both DFPS and the families they serve, and they are located in Montgomery. And then we have two global missions. The first is Living Water. That helps communities in developing countries access clean water, sanitation, and hygiene. Living Water's goal is to help people experience the living water, which is the gospel of Jesus. They have also completed more than 23,000 water projects, including drilling new wells, harvesting water, rehabilitating non-working wells, and drilling boreholes. Living Water also offers training in shallow well drilling, pump repair, and hygiene education, and leads hundreds of volunteers on mission trips each year. Our church has done at least two of those mission trips and built two wells across the world that bear our name. And then Compassion International. They work to end child poverty by connecting children in need with local churches who care for them and they help fight malnutrition, they offer medical care, and most importantly, these churches share the hope of the gospel. 
which changes everything. And we'll have the opportunity to help them for the next three weeks, and I will tell you more about that at the end. You know, the founder of the Salvation Army was Army General William Booth. He was once asked, the secret to the success of the, of the uh, Salvation Army, and he said, some men have a passion for money, some people have a passion for things, and I have a passion for people. Simply put, compassion is the sympathy and the concern for the sufferings or misfortune of others. You know, with another election year ahead of us, there are some who only want to focus on the negative things in this world, what isn't happening in this world, and how things could be better. But you know what? It is not up to the president to make the world a better place. It's up to us. Jesus gives us a very sobering teaching that takes place at the end of days. He says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. And before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from the other as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on the left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or feed you, or thirsty, and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger, and welcome you, or naked, and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did to one of the least of these my brothers, you did to me. According to Jesus, what does compassion do? Compassion provides those who are in need with what they need. You know, we enjoy living in a give-and-take world. And perhaps before a favor is offered, we might first ask, well, what's in it for me? But notice Jesus, his story. They do something for the least, knowing full well that these people will never be able to repay them. In other words, we don't loan, compassion gives. Look at Jesus and all that he did for the least of these. You know, we just got through seven weeks of miracles with Jesus where he healed people, where he fed people, all people who had no way of ever repaying him. Paul says in Galatians, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And I think another one of Jesus' stories that really models these two teachings for us is perhaps the parable of the Good Samaritan. And I don't have time to read the entire thing, but I would like to remind you of a few things from it. You know, in Luke 10, it says, a Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion, there's our word, and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them, and then he put them on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. What does that mean? It means the least of these requires two things from us that we typically have the least of. Notice the Samaritan took time to stay with him and to tend his wounds. I, I sure think time is one of those things that we have the least of. But in Jesus' story, he takes time out of his busy life to do something for a total stranger. We waste so much time in our own lives. We're, we're busy every single minute of the day Giving of that time for another is a big sacrifice. But that's part of compassion. And second, I think compassion takes another thing that we have the least of, and that's money. Luke 10 says, On the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. The good Samaritan spent his own money on a total stranger. And I have to ask, am I willing to do the same? You know, we don't understand how much 
that much money is. But back then, a Roman soldier under uh, Emperor Augustus was paid about 225 denarii a year. So that's four denarii a week. That means the Samaritan gave half a week's salary to put this man up in a hotel. Time, money. Those are resources that are so precious to us. And I think we safeguard those as much as we can, even though we know that Jesus wants us to show compassion. But we have our excuses, right? I I know many times we say, I'm not giving that person money. I'm not giving that person food because they'll just need more later, right? They'll just need more tomorrow. But this parable models compassion regardless of tomorrow. Today, this is what the man needed most. Compassion says, we help now. Another excuse is when we see somebody in help, we often, well, well, why do they need help, right? I I wonder what they did to get themselves in this situation. I wonder if they deserve my help. I mean, is it any of my business? This is probably God's punishment. Maybe God is punishing them. I don't want to mess with God's will. In John 8, when the woman who is caught in adultery is thrown before Jesus' feet, the Pharisees try to trick Jesus. And they say, what do you think we should do to her? Because according to the law, and they knew this, a woman should be put to death. And you know, Jesus never said she wasn't guilty. He doesn't deny her guilt. Instead, he chooses the path of compassion. He makes a statement. You say she's a sinner? Okay. Any one of you who is without sin, you can throw the first stone. And of course, all her accusers left. They walked away because they knew secretly each one of them was a sinner. And they all left. And it was just her standing before Christ. And Jesus says to her, where are your accusers? And she said, they've all gone. And he said, neither do I condemn you. Notice he says condemn. He doesn't say convict because she did commit adultery and she was guilty, but this woman didn't need to be condemned. She needed to be converted. She needed compassion in this moment. When it's our turn, when the opportunity is presented to us and it's our turn to show compassion, it's good for us to remember a story like this that even though we are guilty, even though we too are sinners all the time, Christ shows compassion to us. Psalm 51 says, Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Isaiah 30 says, Therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you. For the Lord is a God of justice, How blessed are those who long for him. So I think on a day like today, Compassion Sunday, this is an expression of willingness on our part to make a difference and a commitment to love the world around us. As disciples of Christ, as followers of Christ, it is our duty, right? It is our mandate, our calling to love God and to love others. We have an upward relationship and we have an outward relationship and compassion is that outward relationship when we can do whatever we can. So I'm going to give you six reasons why we should be compassionate. And the first is compassion reminds me to be grateful, right? It's it's hard for us to imagine the kind of poverty that might rob somebody of their dignity or their quality of life, sometimes even their own life, right? Children are living in poverty. They lack critical resources. People in our own community don't have enough food, water, medicine, shelter, education. We look at vulnerable children, whether they're orphans or widows or prisoners or the homeless or refugees or children that are other parts of the world that are forced into slave labor, children who are abused, children who are exploited. They have no power of their own, no power to help themselves. And I look at the various missions that we support that come alongside shelters, the homeless, 
orphanages, women, and I say, yes, I am grateful. I am so grateful for what I have. If I have shelter, if I have running water, if I have a car that runs, if I have a job, then I am so blessed and I am so rich. You and I certainly have nothing to complain about. Compassion first, chiefly, humbles me. It humbles me and it reminds me that I should be grateful. First Thessalonians 5 says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Second, if you noticed a lot of our nonprofits that we support, they're not just communities that help women and children, but they are also Christian organizations. All of those organizations are Christian organizations, which means compassion can be another way of spreading the gospel. You know, when you think about universities and hospitals that are also started by Christians, orphanages started by Christians, all of these things that help communities, help the impoverished, they are another way of spreading the gospel of Jesus. And as the church, as the body of Christ, it is our job right? It is our job to be the light of the world. John 13 says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If what? If you love one another, not just each other, right? Not just each other Christians, not just your brothers and sisters in Christ that you see every morning on Sunday, but one another, everyone, as we see from the Good Samaritan, even people we don't know, right? Strangers, the selfless act of giving, helps fulfill the love one another command that causes the world to realize maybe those Christians are different, right? Maybe there is a love in them that is deeper than just a surface level love. We wanna show that love of Christ and that is another way of spreading the gospel. It's also another way of spreading the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, some of us have been on the receiving end of compassion. And it is a very humbling experience to ask for help. But aren't we so grateful when after a tragedy or after a fire or after a death, somebody comes alongside and supports us? Compassion is a great way to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I can't imagine living in extreme poverty with no ability to change my situation. But if I were, I would long for the church to help me. Of course, our compassion pleases God, right? Of course. And the Bible is filled with so many stories of compassion. Many compassionate Bible characters are in the pages of the Old Testament. Many of the stories of Jesus and his healing and feeding in the gospels are acts of compassion. And those examples, they are a call to you and to me as followers of Jesus. They speak of a God who had compassion for a for a family, right? For Abraham and his family, and then he had a compassion for Israel. And then Jesus comes and he's a savior who has compassion for the world. The Bible says that he looked out across all the people that he could see and he cared for them the way a mother cares for their child. And he suffered for the world so that we would then take up our cross daily and follow him because that compassion takes the focus off of myself, right? The biggest challenge we face in the world today in serving the poor, giving up our time, giving up our resources, it's, it's selfishness, you know? The, the devil isn't keeping us from giving up our time. The devil isn't keeping us from giving up our money. It's, it's myself. I'm, I'm selfish, I'm self-obsessed. I pursue self-gratification. I, I live with self-focused glasses on. And so loving the poor becomes a challenge for us because like it or not, we still live in a very consumeristic culture. Everything on television is is telling us that we need that in order to make our lives better. Getting as much as we can, bigger and better for us, for me. But Jesus teaches, no, 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 no. Self-gratification does not come from acquiring more, but giving more, showing compassion. Most famously, Jesus said, if you would come after me, you should deny yourself. That was his first command. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. What did Jesus do? He helped strangers. He helped the people around him. 
when he was on his way, when he was on a journey towards some place and he was stopped, right? When he had no time, he was stopped and interrupted. Jesus took time. Jesus gave up his time and resources to help others. And lastly, we show compassion because that's what Jesus modeled. He showed compassion. Matthew 15 says, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I am unwilling to send them away hungry lest they faint along the way. When we serve the least of these, then we are acting like our rabbi. We are acting like Jesus. And of all the reasons to serve, I think this one is the most important. You know, Jesus says that when you give, when you serve, when you do these things, you do these things as if you had done them to me. Well, what if? What if you had seen Jesus who needed help? Wouldn't you help him? What if Jesus that was asking for money? What if it was Jesus that was asking for bread? Would you help him? Of course you would, right? And, but he says that when we help others, when we show compassion, when we serve somebody who needs it, we are serving him. Right now at Walden Church, we have three, three weeks, we have three opportunities to serve. The first of which is our Vacation Bible School items. You know, we put up a bulletin board a couple weeks ago of things we needed to purchase for VBS. We do not charge for Vacation Bible School. So we give the kids a full program for the whole week. We give them shirts and we give them all our volunteers. We give them food and we don't charge for a single minute of it. And that's because you help us with all the arts and crafts items we need and all the food and snacks we need. And of course, your volunteering time as well. And we need all of those things. So if you can volunteer that week, if you can give uh, some towards the craft items or the food items, we need those things so that we can provide a Vacation Bible School to the community. And of course, VBS isn't just fun, right? It is another way for us to show compassion on these families that live in our community, but it also spreads the gospel. And that's what we're here to do. Second thing, we're doing a Maidley Ranch food drive. We found out last week that there are 15 families who attend Maidley Ranch who won't be receiving any food support through the summer. Now, the school district helps support uh, families in need with food through the school year. And in the past, they have helped and bridged that gap through the summer, but this year they're not. And so they are relying on us. So whether it's somebody that attends this church or you just live in the area, or you are just listening to the sound of my voice, there are 15 families in our community that need your help to survive the summer. And that means food, toiletries, cleaning supplies, anything you think a family would need to get through the summer, we need those items. And you can bring them by the church Monday through Friday from nine o'clock to three o'clock, all the way up until June 15th, probably June 14th as we're closed on Saturday, but 15 was just the, the end of the week. So we're saying 15, but it's probably really the 14th. You could probably bring it on the 16th to church on Sunday, but I'm just saying. And then lastly, Compassion International. So for the next three weeks, we are gonna have Compassion International children to support and adopt. And of course, uh, Compassion International is on YouTube. They have a website. You could go watch some videos if you're not fully uh, aware of who they are and what they do. But basically, they take children that are overseas and children that cannot afford school, children that cannot afford medicine, children that either come from uh, families that are impoverished and don't have the, all the necessary tools to raise a child, and they come alongside local churches and help those children with medicine, with education, and with spreading the gospel. And so for the next three weeks in our lobby, you will have the opportunity to support a compassion child for yourself. And it's very simple. You just grab a folder and you just check off that you want a child from this location of the world, a boy or a girl, and then they will mail you a folder and details about that child. And I believe it's $43 a month. But you don't have to come to our church to support a child. You can just simply go to the website. You can go to Compassion uh, International website and you can donate a child straight from there. In fact, they have pictures of the children online. You could go and look at those children and, and find the, the child that you uh, want to support. But those are the three ways that we are uh, supporting 
local, our community, and global, the world, for these next three weeks. And if you come next week, come to church next week, you'll be able to hear directly from three local missions, and we're excited about that. So I hope you come next week. If you're excited about missions or you wanna learn more about uh, God's Garage or Pregnancy Assistance Center, please come next week and support those missions as well. And of course, we'll have uh, Compassion Children in the lobby for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are our refuge and our strength. You are ever-present, and you are always ready to help in times of trouble. Lord, we thank you that you are our safe place, that you are our source of strength, that you are our constant support. In you we find peace. In you we find security. Heavenly Father, we entrust our life to you, knowing that you are all things, both refuge and comfort and true deliverer. And on this Compassion Sunday, may your love and grace guide us in all our ways. May we always seek to be a vessel of comfort and compassion to those around us. And may we continue the mission of your church by serving the least of these. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for coming out and worshiping with us. Of course, join us next week. Uh, we have two services, one at 9.30 and 11. They'll be completely identical. Again, all three of those missionaries will come and speak, and we would love to have you come and meet them and learn more about how they help our community. Thank you guys. I love you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.